Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mavery here, bringing to you another episode of Mausama Retry. So, last episode, uh, we got the Madame at the Hot Springs Hospital, etc., etc. And uh, I presume that in this episode, they're probably going to continue on with this. A hey, some more fan service, right? <laughs> because heavens knows that this series needs more of that. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, we got two episodes left before the very end. Uh, I presume that this uh, this anime is going to end on a similar note to the end of the arc, uh, the end of an arc in the original web novel and in the manga as well. Probably a very important meeting uh, between two people. I'm not gonna spoil who, uh, which will lead to more un misunderstandings in the future, right? I like I said, I don't expect there to be any big resolution left in the time that we have left which is kind of a bummer but you can also view it as a sort of a tease if you will so anyways let's just see what's going to happen over here and go into the episode Alrighty, beginning in three two one play i really don't know why they chose to adapt this into an anime. Wait, what? What? I don't remember this at all. Who are you? What? This was not in the manga nor in the web novel. So Luna wasn't wasn't a holy maiden since she was young. Hmm. Oh, okay, okay. The nobles. Hmm, okay, so she does already have magic power. Wow, I I am really I wonder if this is anime original because um, the web novel doesn't really uh, Go on for far longer than this. Wow I'm actually kind of impressed. Okay Let's skip this real quick. I want to see what happens next And back Madame Roars. Okay, yeah, yeah, so they're still going to go forward with the... Oh. Damn! More? L Childhood Luna? <laughs> she was this haughty since she was young. What? I do know that she feels sympathy for her demi humans. Um, because um, 
her territory. She felt um, she felt sorry for the rabbit people. But if that really is your like long friend, aren't you supposed? Aren't you supposed to be a little bit more sad? Huh. I wonder if this is something uh, that was characterized in the light novel. <laughs> okay, present day. <laughs> oh, he's about to blow your mind. <laughs> like I said, the fan service episode. <laughs> really? You know, I feel like even in modern day, this would be extravagantly luxurious. <laughs> they, they also went way more in depth than the manga or the, uh, the web novel. <laughs> Is this episode going to literally be <laughs> all of this? Like, out of all the things they chose to adapt, of course. <laughs> of course, they're going to 100%, even 150% adapt this part. Don't run in bathhouses. You'll slip and fall. And that'd be really, really hurt. Like I said, out of all the things to adapt, they faithfully adapt this part. Oh. Hmm.
<laughs> Super Sunder Edge, Luna Chan. Like I said, out of all the things, <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that they completely adapt this part. Sort of like foiling. <laughs> I'm gonna live here. Oh, my God, this. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> ah, of course. Ah, uh, I can't wait until White goes there. That's actually one of my favorite parts of the manga as well. <laughs> I love how all of the three holy maidens have drastically different personalities. Uh, I love this series. Again, if you guys are at all interested in this, I highly recommend you guys go read the manga, maybe the white, uh, the web novel or light novel. Like the manga characters look like a hundred times better than anything that's shown here. See, this part is actually kind of hard to adapt, this I will give them, because there's a lot of monologue going on here. Or, actually in terms of both Tahara and you, they have a lot of internal monologues, right? Because we're, we're, they're viewing this situation, they're viewing each other and the Mao as different from their own memories, but they don't say it out loud. Section. 
<laughs> See, the, the problem here is that they haven't properly... Oh, actually, this scene is quite good. I feel like it didn't have the same kind of impact, but, um, well. Oh. Sorry about that, kind of lagged a little bit. She's not wrong, you know, because inside Kunai is literally their creators. They're literally meeting their creators. <sighs> See that scene? <laughs> See, the problem here is uh, they. If they actually made you like much more scary, like she was in the manga, the gap between you know how she's acting here and how she was originally would be bigger, and that would be much more compelling to everyone. <laughs> Hi, Tron. <laughs> okay, that was definitely anime only. <laughs> I don't recall that happening either. And where's the conversation between him and Madame? <laughs> Just like waltzing in. I'm sleeping here.
Luna. <laughs> yep. And of course, what she's going to do is... <laughs> and I do believe it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's still one more. Dang it. Ah, uh, okay, never mind, never mind. But still, some interesting things happened this episode. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let me see up this real quick. I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so let's get down into it, right? Like I said, quite a few things happen in this episode. Um, some some good, some bad, and some, I guess, topics of discussion, right? So starting from the very beginning, we got this little backstory in regards to Luna, which, uh, again, I don't have any recollection of reading in the web novel or in the manga. So I'm not really sure. Maybe this is something further on down the line. Maybe this is something within the light novel, um, or maybe this is something anime only, which... I actually kind of doubt. I, I think like this is probably uh, true to her story because we do know that she has this sort of soft spot for demi humans. Um, this had she already expressed this when um, she first introduced the bunnies to to the mouse. So um, I can absolutely see that as being part of her backstory, and I guess it's trying to build Luna's character with us as well. You know, she's really even though she's quite haughty and. Um, you know, quite rude and frank in a certain way. She is innocent and she is straightforward, right? So these are redeeming qualities of her. So trying to build her reputation amongst us a bit better, right? And I feel like that's a good thing because Luna is actually one of my favorite character out of all the girls here. So uh, I do like it when they give her some love. So good on them, right? Now, in terms of the, uh, you know, guiding Madame around and whatnot, like I said, the anime is choosing to animate and concentrate on the most mundane, uh, mundane things that they could possibly do, right? Like those, I mean, yeah, they all happen, right? But out of everything they chose to adapt this and show her around, like, all the different facilities and all the baths and whatnot, they, <laughs> seriously, I, 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 I mean... I maybe wouldn't be so mad at this if they if they could take some more time in uh, properly characterizing characterizing uh, all the other characters, you know, giving them their own their true personalities and whatnot, and not waste their time on this part. Like it's kind of important, but even at the very end, like there was supposed to be a very important conversation between the madam and the Mao, um, which is again quite important because that's literally what this uh, this facility you know these hot springs this in this uh hospital which we were working on for like a third of the series right that's literally the entire culmination of what it is supposed to be about so i don't think they're going to skip it they probably want to move it to the next episode but um again i'm just saying that they could have just easily squeezed it in here and um including uh, the madame's backstory as well and we would be getting a much better characterization of why she's acting the way she is what are her needs what are her desires and how why she is so willingly able to um co collaborate with it with the mal right so we already know that she's being impressed by all this different stuff we still don't know why yet right like why is she so impressed by this and what does she feel about this entire situation and more importantly what is the misunderstanding at hand between her and the Mao that's um leading 
you know, in the end, it's going to be a net positive for the Mao, right? But this entire series is really a, always about misunderstandings. People are understanding what the Mao actually means. He might mean something very innocent. Others take it as something way more serious. It all works out in the end, but that's uh, sort of the beauty and the humor of the situation. And that's why I like this series so much. So I do hope that they will eventually get to that part as well. Um, and then speaking of you and Taha, right, like there was this scene here that was actually pretty, I personally feel like it's pretty important, right, because again, I feel like its importance is not as prominent here, and that is entirely uh, due to the fact in how the anime is choosing to portray these two characters. You, um, through all her descriptions, and when she initially came into the scene, she was the entire definition of a very cold and ruthless um, beauty, right? So she she um, was the personification of uh, of sadism, of sadistic tendencies. You know, her profile says as much, and she really gave off that kind of vibe at the very beginning. Later on, through um, for her travels with the Mao, and because. Uh, you know, the entire thing with, you know, the creator residing within uh, the Mao right now. So her personality kind of uh, shifted. And we're always given this sort of contrast between how she's supposed to be uh, versus the sort of like cute, sweet you that we see here, right? And so there's the, the entire fun of this lies in the fact that there's this gap between their personalities, between her personalities, and that's what's driving her character. And we're not really seeing much of this here because she's already you know from the instant that she arrived here she already had sort of like a mild personality and now we're just seeing her sweet and i guess sort of yandere side but that doesn't really have any impact if we don't know her other side right so that's one of the things that i feel like the anime is really failing to do like i can forgive animation and um and all that right they don't have budget fine but characterization that is very important and that really doesn't take much budget so i feel like that is definitely something that i will hold against this anime adaption um same for tahara as well um when he first came onto the scene he was basically sort of like this very laid-back person right he's very laid-back um um, and we can still see it here as well. He throughout uh, the brief time that we've known him, he's pretty laid back. Uh, he's um, acting quite normal, right? So in this, sorry, I'm I'm having a runny nose right now, so I'm having a little bit of trouble speaking. Um, in this episode, uh, this particular scene, actually, it's the only time we uh, within these few episodes within these early arcs that we see Tahara really bring out his very serious face and his killing face because make no mistake all these all these close aides of the Mao or I should say specifically Kunai is, are killers right they are his bodyguards they are killers they're his close aides but you know the great empire right it was not a very nice place to live in and these guys they're more akin to mafia if anything right they do a lot of dirty work and so the, the the thing here is the contrast that we see is how he's normally so laid back and you know he's basically just like um just like your your favorite uncle or or maybe older brother or something but then in these specific situations he turns into a cold a complete cold-blooded killer right and that was what was supposed to happen in this scene as well he reverted back to his uh you know his killer tendencies uh when he was saying that i'm going to kill you you uh, he was being very serious here, but I feel like in this adaption, they just sort of like brushed it off a little bit. And so that failed to give the gravity of the situation and the gravity of this character to us. So again, I feel like that's a little bit, that is again something that I will hold against him. So seriously, if you guys want to, if you guys want to uh, take a look at this scene, go watch, go read the manga. The manga portrayed this scene much better. Um... And also, you know, all the characterizations in general, they do a much better job of uh, letting us see the gaps between their personalities here. Um, so yeah, and at the very end, uh, we got to see, what is it? Uh, I mean, you know, the girls, the little girls will be little girls, like, I'm not going to comment too much on that. We do see the interaction between uh, White and Queen. Um, that's also kind of important because... Um, one of the last meetings actually is going to uh, revolve around one of those characters. I'm not going to spoil who it is, although I'm sure that most of you probably can already guess since um, 
Well, anyways, like I said, I'm not going to spoil too much. Uh, literally two episodes away anyways, and I am looking forward to that because that has to be one of my favorite misunderstandings and one of my favorite scenes uh, throughout these entire, uh, these early few arcs of this series. So, there we go. Uh, that was my review for this episode. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next week as well. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.